Hi guys, my name is Jared Labrum, here to talk about my case presentation this week. Um, I've got an ankle. So I have a 51 year old female uh, who owns her own daycare center. She was a referral diagnosis from the doctor for posterior tib tendinosis. Uh, she's right handed. Our chief complaint is of right ankle pain, especially at night and with driving. Along with that, there's a lot of swelling at night. Um, it's been bothering her since about 2012, but this past month the pain has been getting gradually worse, and so that's why she came in to uh, see us and see the doctor. And there are her photo scores. So, patient's primary complaint um, was pain across the cruel joint line of the ankle and the both sides of the ankle. She rated her about 10 at worst and 0 to 10 at best. There's no numbness. I also forgot to mention that she came in with instructions to get a boot. So we actually fitted her with her boot. Um, the doctor did not want her moving that ankle as much. So we also fitted her with a boot. Joints under the area of the symptoms. Uh, tail cruel, like I said. Subtalar distal to a fibular joint. Um, structures which may refer to the area. Um, there's not too many. You may get a lumbar disc bulge, sciatica, piriformis syndrome, lumbar facet joint. They may refer down to the area of the nervous system. Um, as far as contractile structures in the area, uh, your posterior, posterior tib tendon, anterior tib tendon, deltoid ligament, anterior talofibular ligament, talofibular ligament, calcaneofibular ligament, and syndesmosis. Um, were the other tractile structures around in that area? Um, the primary and secondary hypotheses. Um, we, uh, my primary was tibialis posterior tendinosis. The secondary was tibialis anterior tendinosis. Um, aggravating factors for her. Um, primary one was standing for long periods of time. Thing which eased that was sitting down. Um, another aggravating factor was driving. Uh, something that eased that obviously would be stop driving or ice. Um, and then aggravating factors. Um, a third one was right before she would go to bed, um, the swelling and pain would be really bad. Um, the way she eased that was either just falling asleep <laughs> or taking her meds. She said once she fell asleep, she felt fine. In the morning, she didn't really have any problems. It was really just at the end of the day that uh, the swelling and pain was really bad. So, asleep in 24-hour pattern. Um, she did have difficulty falling asleep, but the pain does not wake her up at night. Um, it does get pretty painful right before falling asleep, and so she says she has to take some sort of medication. Um, as far as a 24-hour pattern, pretty constant pain she said um, it hurts more of standing for too long or driving um, she usually sits down and, and it doesn't feel too bad um, she says at times that I mean like I said before the pain is 0 out of 10 um, but it, she does work at a dairy care so she does move a lot and so that can cause a lot of pain for her um, as far as duration of current systems like I said swelling since August of 2012, but the pain started about a month ago. So, um, in December is about, and we did this examination in January. So, in December, it started bothering her, the pain did. Um, there was no mechanism of injury, it was just more of a gradual and insidious onset. Um, the progression since current episodes, she says it stayed about the same. It hasn't better, it hasn't gotten any worse. There was no significant prior history, and she had no previous treatment done on her ankle. Um, medical history, comorbidities, review of symptoms. Uh, there was no red flags, no yellow flags. Um, she just had x-rays, which were negative, and she's been taking some NSAID. Um, as far as asterisk signs or, or things that um, I would like to take from the subjective, uh, increased pain in standing, pain and swelling before bed, and I would say maybe even pain.
pain while driving. I think that's something to keep in mind. So my primary and secondary hypothesis, uh, primary was tibialis posterior tendinosis, secondary tibialis anterior tendinosis. Um, as far as initial hypothesis that I've ruled out during history, um, like I said, this was a referral diagnosis from the doctor. So just based on the history and what we got, we ruled out bone fracture. There's no history of cancer or blood clots um, and no history of cardiovascular problems. So I basically ruled out those things. Uh, as far as the severity of the condition, it was pretty moderate. Um, the patient was really able to perform all ADL. She said there was just some increased time and difficulty. So that's something that really bothered her. She didn't like that as much per se. Um, and what is the irritability of the condition? I also, again, said moderate. Um, either the one of those, I almost could have said minimal. But uh, I, sense, I felt since it was more of a chronic condition, that it's moderate. And since um, it's bothered with some ADLs, like driving and just being at her daycare, she said she can still do stuff at work, but... I could tell there, there was some annoyance with the whole having to sit down quite a bit and not being able to move or stand on her feet as much as she would like. And at night, definitely at night, bothered her, you know, right before going to bed. Um, the primary nature um, of this, I would definitely say, is musculoskeletal. Um, I don't think we have, you know, just based on our, our screenings, we, we didn't have any um, red flags as far as our neurological exam or anything like that. Um, what stage is the disorder? Um, it's, it's getting worse, so it's not getting any better. Um, you know, it's not calming. You know, we're in a chronic inflammation stage here. And so it's it's just been getting worse. And I, the fact that she never treated it when it got swollen, I mean, she said she would do some ice and stuff like that. But since it never hurt her, she didn't really think much about it. Um, so the current stability of the disorders, um, I would say, is unstable. But we were able to reproduce her pain later on in the examination. Um, so... We are able to reproduce that pain, but it comes on and off. I mean, it's not something, the pain's just not constant throughout. Um, there's different things that aggravate it. So what would I include to rule in or rule out um, for my hypotheses? Um, palpation, range motion, and muscle tests. Those are the three main things that we want to look at, see what felt painful and what motions limited in or felt fine in, and if there was any motions that she was weak in. And uh, we didn't defer anything. Um, I may, you know, after looking back at this, we could have maybe done a, a balance test, but at the time, we didn't have anything that we wanted to defer and, and test later. Uh -huh. and as far as precautions or contraindications, there was none. Uh, postural observation, there was none. Um, functional movement analysis, I mean, she did have pain with walking, especially at the end of the day, and she had difficulty driving. Um, quick screening tests uh, or clearing of additional joint structures, the, those were all within normal limits and nothing shot out at me. I should be worried about same as myotomes, dermatomes, and reflexes. Her range of motion, though, her dorsiflexion was limited. Uh, it was about 17 degrees. Uh, she didn't really have any pain with any motion, per se. And uh, she just was, like I said, prolonged standing or driving is something that really bothered her. So, um, palpation was very tender along the tail cruel joint line, joint line and along the tibialis 
posterior tendon and tibialis anterior tendon. That's where the medial lateral part of the ankle was pretty tender. Uh, manual muscle testing, plantar fraction rated um, minus 4 out of 5, inversion 4 out of 5, eversion 4 out of 5. Muscle length there. Um, hamstring length was pretty normal, um, and we didn't perform uh, any special tests. So my primary hypothesis following the physical exam, I still believe is posterior tibialis tendinosis. Um, it also may be tibialis anterior tendinosis. Um, but the weak plantar flexion just makes me think it's more posterior tibialis. But there's definitely some anterior tibialis tendinosis going on here as well, or some chronic inflammation in that area. She's just tender and painful, you know, all along those tendons. So that's why I think um, that it's that. Um, and things that I definitely want to focus on with her as far as the uh, treatments and plan goes is we want to decrease her pain with prolonged standing and, um, and decrease her pain and swelling at night and her pain with driving. So um, things that we'll look at and, and want to fix are her weakness with plantar flexion, inversion and eversion, and then increase that dorsiflexion. Um, I do expect this patient to have a full recovery. Um, I expect her to get better in four to six weeks um, if she comes. And uh, I expect to see the patient one to two times for a week. And some of the goals that we put down at the time were improved patients, ankle plantar flexion, eversion, and inversion strength to five out of five in four weeks. Increase, increase patients, dorsiflexion, range of motion in four weeks to 20 degrees. Alleviate patient's pain while driving to 1 out of 10 in 4 weeks. And improve foot and ankle ability measure score to 70. She was at a 50, so I wanted to increase that to 70. Um, and then how will I know whether our patient is ready for discharge? Uh, when patient is performing home exercise program, pain is decreased and is able to perform full work duties. I thought would be a good time to discharge. Um, if my patient isn't progressing, at what point would we stop? Um, I would probably say after the third visit, and I have two to three there. But if if she's, I mean, if she's becoming worse after two visits, um, and then I'm going to change it. I mean, she needs to be compliant with her home exercise and stuff like that. But this has been a chronic problem, so when I you know, recover after the first couple of treatments, especially she's not doing her exercises. And then what's my overall management strategy? Uh, we want to use manual therapy, therapeutic exercises, first couple of sessions. Uh, Dan really likes to dry needle. Um, we could do something like that just to see if that kind of frees up and lets the tendons start, or the muscles start working better around there. Um, but, you know, also I want to progress her to doing functional activities like moving up and down stairs, you know, do something like driving just to kind of get her feeling better um, with that. So that's my presentation. If you guys have any questions or comments, just let me know.